you actually don't need to go to school you know especially for computer science i would say people uh, looking for jobs there are not enough openings today's case what happens is you go to youtube the whole university is right there so that's where i feel you'll be able to impress the interviewers more and then you change a job or something and then you are down level why two decade back when i started my journey so we're back on Google campus. If you guys remember, I interviewed Dharendra in person. That's where we met actually. Yeah. And I thought I'd come back because he's an engineering manager so we can get some insights from him today. So why don't you just go ahead and introduce yourself first. Yeah, hey folks, uh, my name is Dharendra Sinha. Uh, I'm an engineering manager here at uh, Google uh, in the Google Cloud Org. 20 years of work experience in the software industry. For the last decade or so, I've been working as an engineering manager in various capacities. I've worked at startups, big companies, small companies, so. Cool, yeah, well, let's start with a meaty question, you know, in hiring freezes, layoffs. It seems like it's really hard to get a job these days. Is that true from I a mean, managing perspective at big tech? And then maybe more importantly, how do we kind of break through it? It is true. I mean, the market is uh, kind of tough um, these days. I coach and mentor a lot of folks and um, the temperature I'm getting from outside is a bit less. You know, people are looking for jobs. There are not enough openings. Um, you know, last year's layoff is not yet healed properly, fully yet. So, uh, yes, it is uh, kind of tough. You know, people are, I mean, employers are getting lot, many options and they're choosing the best, most appropriate. So it's not as easy as it was uh, like 2022. And I'm hearing that it's biased towards seniority. So it's, it's, it's very hard for new grads. A lot of people are looking for senior roles. Well, I, I wouldn't say exactly that, but the point is for every level, right? You need people at every le yeah. level. Uh, but the point is there are too much competition. Mm. And I'm not sure, you know, I have not, not done a market study to see that seniority. Maybe you're right. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, the scarcity, right? So basically it's employer's market. So if sure. given 10 resumes, you know, you would obviously pick the m more experience and sort of hire them at a lower level, uh, if you will. Yeah. That's how employers market behave. So. Sure. So the next question is, do you have any advice? Like, let's say you're back in the market recruiting and you could tailor this to maybe like a great market or maybe the current market when you're trying to break into big tech. Like, yeah. well, how would you advise people to do that? Yeah, I think a general thing is you want to be on top of your game, right? That's number one. So you don't want to just prepare for interviews at the time of interview yeah. and then, you know, get a job. And after that, you sort of, you know, get uh, into this loop of delivering things, but the, you you know, you lose your touch. And that's what I recommend. I myself, you know, that's one of the reasons I teach, uh, the courses I teach, is to stay current, you know, stay very technical, is to yeah. sort of uh, always be ready, right? And that's what I would advise. If you have gotten a job, still do some side, side projects, deliver at your workplace, no questions, you know, you don't want to uh, slack over uh, there at all. Yeah. But at the same time, just don't relax and just in this economy, in this, uh, in fact, our profession, software industry itself, it's pretty dynamic. Mm. So you want to be able to always be able to sort of unlearn and learn yeah. uh, multiple times. Sure. So you don't want to just slack back. That's the only advice I would give you. Yeah. But of course, you know, other popular advices we already know what to do and things like that. But maybe we can talk about that in detail. But sure. that's, that's the number one thing I would say. Yeah, that makes sense. So I think a lot of people know that you know, resume is really important, make sure DSA is really good, system design, like all yeah. these things you have to do. It almost yeah. feels like that's table stakes. Yeah. Without that, you can't get the job. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that practice hard, they study hard, they do all of that. Yeah. But there's still so many candidates. Yes. There's only so many openings. In yeah. this market, even less. Yeah. <laughs> now that you've been in the industry 20 years, to all yeah. these people that are trying, doing all these things, but it's not working, like what yeah. else? Is there something you might have learned through your experience that yeah. can help them out? Yeah. Very good question. So this is my take on it, right? I, I've been pondering about this question. So think about it like a two decade back when I started my journey. Yeah. There was less information out there in the public. Only books uh, were the only source of information. There was no YouTube, right? Things were not even born that time. Yeah. Uh, so it was harder uh, to sort of you know acquire the knowledge. But then if one who acquired the knowledge had an edge. Mm. Today's case, what happens is you go to YouTube, the whole university is right there. Yeah. You actually don't need to go to school, you know, especially for computer science, I, I would say, uh, especially for, you know, software programming job. But the point is that is available for everyone. Yeah. What do you do beyond that is what counts mm. because that's how you'll be able to differentiate. Sure. So one of the things is, let's say system design, let's talk about that, right? So system design, if you say, if you are able to put basic things together, a client, yeah. a load balancer, an app server and database and things like that, no SQL, SQL. This is table stake. Everybody knows it. This is basic expectations. People are not even questioning you there. Yeah. Right now, people are thinking about how do you drive it, right? So you can clear the system design interview, but at the same time, which seniority will you be bucketed? Mm. That is determined upon how do you drive it. Do you take more leadership right there? Yeah. Conversation, like for example, at a staff level, you may be expected to sort of teach me something. Yeah. Right. I'm also at the similar level. I'm hiring. 
can you teach me something? Can I learn something from you right there in the interview? Do I do I see something? That probably is the bar, right? For senior candidates also, are you talking about much detail? Are you yeah. talking about technology as well? You use Redis or, you know, other technology. Why? Do you have familiarity? Do you have any nuanced thing there? Or are you talking in general stuff, right? Yeah. So that's where I feel you'll be able to impress the interview interviewers more. You got to have an edge. Yeah. The competition is high. So you, yeah. How would you outrun them? Sure. That is the only way. No, that makes sense. I want to thank ClickUp for sponsoring this video, the ultimate productivity tool that can replace all your other apps and help you stay organized. With ClickUp, you can manage documents, charts, calendars, and so much more. As a software engineer, I'm often bombarded with multiple iterations, feature requests, bug fixes, and code reviews. With so much going on, it's easy to overlook small details, which can lead to bugs and delays. ClickUp helps you streamline all these moving parts, giving the tools to manage tasks, track progress, and collaborate effectively. There are a variety of different views, like board, calendar, and list. You first define overarching categories like social, email, and blog. And then you can define tasks for each category with a variety of parameters, the most important usually being status. Now, as you and your team progress through your regular workflows, you can simply drag and drop tasks to move them along the pipeline. You can get started today 100% for free using my special link in the description. No credit card required, no strings attached. Now let's get back to the video. And I think another way to think about this is through our careers, we all make mistakes. Yeah. And so I'm sure there's things you could have done differently. Some people are looking for advice so they don't make those same mistakes. If you refer back to your own career or maybe careers of other people you've mentored, yeah. are there glaring issues you've seen that you're like, oh, maybe we shouldn't do that? Or like think about things a little differently that could help people? Yeah, it's, it's a broad question, but a couple of thoughts which come to me, I'll, I'll share that. Yeah. So one of the thing is, you know, some people are just focused on going to the next level, getting promoted yeah. as fast as possible. It's like after some time, there is not much growth. I mean, yeah. there are only 10 levels. Sure. A to Z, right? If you talk about the software to senior and staff and senior staff and principal and whatnot. Eh, only seven, eight, ten levels. How, where else will you go? If every year you do it, it's not possible, right? Yeah. Number one. Number two is rather than focusing on going to the next level, focus yeah. on growing to the next level. Mm. Because that is otherwise what will happen is you keep climbing up yeah. and then you change a job or something and then you are down leveled. Uh -huh. Why? Because it's probably, you know, in your comfort zone you actually got uh, you know to climb up the ladder yeah. and got promoted, maybe. Maybe that's the situation because you know context so very well. Yeah. You go to another company, you probably will have to learn quite a bit. Uh, the point which I always tell people is always focus on learning. Don't focus on the levels or the promotion. Of course, there are a lot of things tied to it. Uh, you know, money is tied to it. The uh, autonomy is tied to it. You yeah. know, things like that. Leadership is tied to it. Got it. Yeah. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you're growing. You're sure. challenging yourself. You are making yourself throw yourself a bit uh, in the uncomfort zone sure. and figure out what can you learn from it. Yeah. Because at the staff level, there's no mercy. Yeah. <laughs> there's a system design question, let's say, or, or, or a programming question, dynamic programming, very tough question. There's no mercy. You got to know this. You got to know this. You got to have behavioral, I mean, everything. And there's no mercy. Yeah. And I've been there and I felt like yeah. at junior level, they may say that, okay, he was a good coder, but he didn't have this experience. Yeah. Uh, you know, let her learn. Uh, it's fine. We want to hire. With the situation, of course, no more mercy. Yeah. So that that's uh, something which I would say: keep learning, keep figuring out what can you learn. How would you grow yourself? Yeah. Because in totality, if you don't have people skills, soft skills, mm. communication skills, hard, you know, tough design problems, yeah. tough situations, conflicts, all these things, we many a times talk about that it is relevant for. As you grow senior staff, you know, you may need those skills as well. Sure. Back in the day, we had legacy industries where people were very loyal. They'd work 20 year career at one company. <laughs> then we got to like the 2015s, 2020s, where it was like move every one year, two year, three yeah. year, start up to start up to start up. Yeah. And now we're in this kind of weird place where either because of layoffs, people are scared to move or people are just like are yeah. forced out. What yeah. do you think of the current market? Do you think it's optimal to keep jumping? Do you think you should stay? Like, how do you consider that in your own career? Our industry goes through the cycles. Yeah. And this is one of those low phase, right? Sure. And I'm sure the market will be better. Um, I'm an optimist. Um, so 2008 happened, you know, and all these things will happen. It's a cycle, yeah. so it will get better. But at the same time, what I would say is around this time, uh, market is really tough, yeah. right? We know that it will be, it will get better. So, so the point is, I think this is the time where, where you should stay put. Okay. Right. Uh, there's no point in just going out. If you have a job, if you're comfortable there, stay there. It's yeah. not the time to really go out there. It's employer's market. So you probably will get down leveled or uh, salary will be low. And I don't know what all will happen if you just go out there. There's no point in yeah. experimenting. If you can stay put for a year or so, do that. Okay. Right. And but but do, just don't sit there. You know, just make sure that you're always ready. Make sure that you're always learning. Make sure that when the time comes right, if you wanted to change, if you really were seeing some gap and you had the intent, go out and change. 
yeah. it doesn't have to be today uh, because the market is obviously going through its trough phase. Yeah. Right? So let it pass. <laughs> yeah. Um, switching gears a little bit with the age of AI, you know, we went from a time where everyone wanted to study CS. Now people are like, is there even a point? Like, is, <laughs> am I going to have a job? How has AI affected your job? Do you use it on your team? Are you worried about it? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm uh, worried. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's all a phase. Like, you know, when the calculators came in, there was a disruption, right? Teachers yeah. were worried about it, things yeah. like that. So anything comes suddenly, mm -hmm. there is always a shock. Yeah. And that's what we are experiencing through. AI just came in very suddenly. Yeah. Sort of last year it shocked us. Oh, this, I don't have to really write, put a lot of uh, thought around writing. You can just put a tonality to it and I get a, this thing, that thing, you know. All these things are happening. I think people are still understanding the power of AI application, which is around uh, AI. That's yeah. still happening. We do use, you know, of course, in our talks and a lot of places, emails, we have been seeing that. You know, there are a lot of places where it is the embedded yeah. AI. It'll be part of life. That's how I see it. Yeah. But I think the person who will win in this race or person who will always have an edge is a person who thinks basics will never go away yeah right if you are just going higher and higher level there is a there is a bigger challenge yeah people just float in the higher level of space where they don't understand the very basics yeah so chat gpd or uh, you know gemini if you use them you'll always be floating in a very high level of thing and yeah. if that doesn't work you don't know what to do and it happened with me and i just give you a very analogy a good analogy there people don't know how to behave mm -hmm. when there is this thing is taken away from them that shouldn't be the case understand why things are behaving the way are behaving just don't fly in a very upper layer where you don't understand yeah so that's what i would say those are the people who will always be needed yeah apart from the communication skill apart from the you know you have a problem can you take that problem, ambiguous problem, yeah. define it properly, yeah. scope it down properly? I think that is a skill which will be valuable, which, okay. which will be more and more needed. And then last question, so you know, we figured out how to get a job, we battled AI, we're actually good with it now, we, we, well, we got there, we're in big tech or some startup, and we want to grow our career, it's a marathon, not a sprint, yeah. and we want to keep getting promoted and doing better. What advice would you have to an engineer who's maybe just starting out in their career? How should they kind of look at this timeline? Every company has very different uh, set of uh, met, uh, rubric uh, metrics, you know, how do they think about level one, level two, and so on and so forth. Typically, what you would see is you need to know your CS fundamentals very, very well. I recently wrote a blog also. I think that's a good reference. You can take a look. I teach uh, courses as well on this career guidance. But really, if you see, if you go to the higher level, what you're doing is you are thinking like, uh, so I'll give you a simple analogy. A developer, software developer, what they do is they write code and debug code. A senior or a staff engineer, they write systems and debug systems. Mm. A manager writes team and debugs teams. Mm. And a director or a you know senior level manager, they write orgs and debug orgs, so yeah. to speak, right? So that's the thing. You want to be able to grow to the next level, thinking about it. How are you uh, doing something which a junior engineer cannot do. You need to be able to differentiate. That's your growth. You're able to take ambiguous problems, scope it down very, very clearly, mm. hand it over to uh, junior engineers and they can implement it, right? You need to be able to play your role. Yeah. If you're still doing the junior engineer's job, then you make yourself redundant. What's the point of having five, seven, ten years of experience when you can't use it, leverage it sure. and play a higher role? Yeah. I think there are a lot of details here, uh, which I'm skipping obviously, but, uh, but that's what you need to remember. What are you doing which five years back you couldn't do? Mm -hmm. What about these five years of experience? What can you infer from this and do to the next level? Awesome. Thank you. This has been so great. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> cool.